Just fetch shock, play channeler. That's that's what you want to do, opponent. Fetch shock, play channeler. Remember when I said Bajuka Bog is good and I would like to play it in the main deck? Boom. All right, guys. We are here for match three with the list that you see on screen. We are playing Karns. And I got to tell you, last round we played against Affinity and it was extremely unfair. So if you haven't seen that or any of the other previous rounds, i.e. match one, then you need to check those out where you can find where you can find the details of this deck list and why we're playing the cards that we're playing. And yeah, we're currently 2-0. See if we can keep it up. I'll see you guys in match three here. Alrighty, let's hop in here on the play. Maybe. I mean, third time in a row. That can't be that likely, right? Nah, we're on the draw. Should have known better than to ask something unreasonable like that. We really wish any of these cards was... Well, any of these summoners packs, I suppose I would say, was a bounce land. But, nah, we, we can't keep a one lander, unfortunately. And this hand is extremely slow. We play Talari West, Forest, or Misty Rainforest, depending, and then play a turn three Dryad. I guess an untap land would make this a turn four Titan. We gotta put one of these on the bottom. It might just be Karn, to be honest. I think keeping this and bottoming Karn is reasonable. It's on the draw. It's kind of slow. We can still top deck a Grazer or an Amulet, and then this becomes much faster. In fact, an Amulet makes this a turn three Titan with Dryad, so... I think we're definitely supposed to keep this, and I am pretty inclined to bottom Karn here. It could be wrong. But, I mean, we need all these lands to get to Titan mana. Our opponent plays turn one Blood Crypt Shock and Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess we're playing Talari West and Passing. Passing it back to them. Discard spell really wrecks this hand. I should also add, they just discard, take the Dryad, and then we're never getting to Titan in a million years, and they just kill us with tempo. It's very possible. You know, actually, Explore would be a pretty good top deck here as well. Having something to do on turn two here to help us accelerate a little bit without losing cards. Explore seems very good in this type of matchup. A second channeler. I don't know if I should be as afraid of that one as the first or not, because it it helps them get Delirium online faster, thanks to the Surveil. But, uh... And they do have a discard, so... <laughs> three Vernon Catacombs, huh? They discard Inquisition. Well, they couldn't have known that their Inquisition was going to be dead, since the Thoughtseize hadn't resolved yet, but they're going to be really glad, really glad that they put the Inquisition in the yard. Alright, let's just top deck Explore. No big deal. Explore. Amulet. I'll take that also. We're playing it, so our... Amulet doesn't get discarded. And I guess we play the Misty. So we could potentially transmute Tari West next turn if we wanted to. We can fetch for Breeding Pool, of course. And then if our opponent plays Basic Swamp Blood Moon, oh boy, we'll have a Basic Forest. Look at us. Tarfire. Interesting. We'll yield to these Surveils. We're probably about to take a huge chunk. It's in Sorcery Land Tribal. Yeah, we're about to take six. They have main board Luris. Intriguing. Very interesting. I wonder what three mana cards they're trying to play so that they can still play Luris, but only have it in the main board, right? Because if they had revealed Luris from the sideboard, that would mean they're not playing something like Liliana of the Veil. I guess they could be playing like Street Wraith or something if they're on a shadow deck. Or if they're on more of a traditional Jun list, then I suppose they could be playing Liliana of the Veil. Like, it's possible the Tower Fire is there because it enables the synergy with Channeler as far as, like, getting Delirium online. But it also is good with Tarmogoyf. And if they're playing Tarmogoyf, they're likely to be playing Liliana of the Veil as well. That would be, like, a, a normal three-mana spell that they could be playing that they wouldn't want to reveal Lurus in the sideboard for. Death Shadow. Okay, so it looks like it might just be Street Wraith then. I don't know. We'll see. We'll draw Grazer. Well, that is one short of casting Titan here. Sadly, we probably do have to play it, though. Play Grazer, block this, take six. And then next turn, if we top deck a Grazer or an Azusa, we have a route to Titan. We could play out the Sanctuary 
with this grazer, transmute the T West for a bounce land, and then we'd have exactly six mana next turn to cast Titan without needing the top deck. So we're going to be going down to six in the process, though. So it might not even be. I guess if we can resolve a Titan, haste it, and connect, then they'll just be dead since the Titan plus Stronghold will be exactly eight. So we want Breeding Pool here. So good thing we played out this Windswept Teeth, uh, not Windswept Teeth, this uh, Misty Rainforest, isn't it? We'll yield here. Float, float. Eh, not that one. Not that color. There we go. We'll Grazer. Put in Sanctuary. We'll float and pick up Tulare West. Transmute it. And we'll get... I almost clicked Summoner's Pack. That is, uh, that is uh, not what we want to get. We'll get the Growth Chamber and pass. And now we have four mana in play, plus a Growth Chamber that'll untap thanks to Amulet. So we do have Titan next turn. Go straight to combat. Not a bad sign. Definitely not a bad sign. And they don't have any creatures up to block, so hopefully they don't have a second shadow or something. Just pass. Just pass. You know, you know you just want to pass. Tarmogoyf. That's not passing, opponent. That is oof. That is the opposite of passing. Alright, we'll draw. Explore. Interesting. I guess we lead on that in case we hit second amulet. It won't stop us from casting Titan. Okay, that one's not great. We don't have mainboard bog, so we can't turn their channelers off and shrink their goif. This is exactly the kind of matchup that I was afraid of with not playing Bog in the main. So we play Titan, get Radiant Fountain, and die. Go to 8, block this, take lethal. We haste attack. They trade the Tarmogoyf. We get Radiant Fountain and something on the attack. And we take... I mean, we're still dead. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything we can do. Let me check to see if there's any other relevant lands. No, I, I think that we're actually just out of it. Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. Oh, let's not even show them. How about that? Go to sideboard. All right, against Death Shadow, that is the kind of matchup where you want to sideboard out Karn, I think. Because, I mean, especially against the blue Shadow decks, you just get your Karn Sovereign Denial. Against Jund, I guess you can top deck a Karn and minus for explosives, perhaps, but I think it'd probably be better to just draw the explosives, as you might be dead the turn after you play your Karn, expecting it to do work. Golo seems very good here, and so does Warm Coil, just having extra threats to play through discard spells. But Jukabog is obviously going to be useful here. Tormod's Crypt, I don't think we want to waste a card for the effect, though. Do we want Dismembers? They hit Channelers, they hit Luris, they hit Small Tarmogoyce, potentially. I feel like they're close to good enough. They might even be playing Dark Confidant, so probably worth it. Grazers are not great. They do take a Chump Block, and they help us play around Liliana in the Veil if our opponent has it, but they also put us down a card, so I don't know. I'm not super sold on Grazer. We don't want Cavern here. We could trim one Summoner's Pack as well, just so we don't have to tap out, which I don't think is bad, although having live top decks for Titan is relevant. But regardless, I think this is fine. Yep, I don't see anything else we'd want to change. We don't, want to we don't really want a uh, Pithy Needle, so... Be on the play. I mean, again, we have a turn three Dryad, turn four Titan kind of hand, but uh, double discard spell wrecks this. Not doing anything until turn three is a little better on the play than it is on the draw, but I mean, if our opponent kills our Dryad, we're not doing much because our Titan just enters play and what gets Bajukabog and Radiant Fountain, I guess, or Bajukabog and Talari West, and we don't even have the blue to transmute. I think we kind of have to mulligan that. Well, this is why you mulligan. We get a turn three Titan with double amulet, assuming that we don't just get wrecked by discard spells. So we definitely keep this. And I think we actually want to bottom the forest here. That way we can have blue and play the transmute if we need it. Like, let's say they Inquisition to take our Stubbornness Pact and, and we top deck Talaria West. We could potentially get Breeding Pool and Growth Chamber online to transmute. So I think that's fine. I don't mind taking the three damage. It does play a little worse around our opponent having 
Scourge of the Skyclaves, but... I mean, we can't play around everything. Right, here is turn one amulet to pass. Hopefully they just play turn one channeler and then we top deck Brazer or Azusa or Titan. Just fetch shock play channeler. That's that's what you want to do, opponent. Fetch shock play channeler. Cycle Street Wraith. So it is Street Wraith. Makes sense. <sighs> that is not a channeler, opponent. That's not what you were supposed to do. They take this amulet. Interesting. I'm a little surprised by that. We would have had the Grazer, too. Uh, all right, well, we'll play the Garen Brig. Let's see, next time we play Growth Chamber, float three. Grazer out, Growth Chamber a second time. That's four to activate. So if we hold the Grazer, we have a Titan next turn. Assuming our opponent doesn't just cast another discard spell, which they very well might here. That might be the reason why they chose Amulet off the Inquisition. Or they're just going to abrupt decay this Amulet and think that it's good enough. And who knows, maybe it will be. Oh, we have Titan this turn. Okay. We can even attack through their Tarmogoyf. Let's see. So it starts by playing this. And we will have double green. So don't need to worry about that. We can play a post-combat uh, Dryad here as well. Razor. Float, activate, pick up. Do we just want... I guess we're going to need to pay for Pact, so we want to leave as much mana in play as possible. In that case, I'm picking up the Garen Brig, I think. We'll cast this. Get Titan. Play Titan. We'll hasten attack because it's free. Well, I guess there's the argument that if they have a shadow, this really enables their shadow if they just take eight and play a huge shadow. Like, let's say the next turn they go land, terminate our titan, play shadow. I mean, that would be really bad for us, potentially. We could just get... We could just get bounce land and bog here. Pick up the bog, play dryad land, and then next turn we can attack and get double vowel cut and have lethal that way, and that way they have to deal with the dryad and the titan. And it also doesn't enable them to, to play Shadow, so. I think Bounce Land and Bog is actually better here. As crazy as it is. That's what I'm going to go for. We'll Bog them first and foremost. We'll always yield. Float, float. Pick up the Bog, I guess. Sure. Play Dryad. Do we Bog ourselves? I don't really see a reason not to. If we next turn attack, get double Valka, we have land, land. We're probably going to play a land pre-combat, though. It might be better to hold on to the land just so that we have guaranteed lethal next turn with Valka. Otherwise, we have to, we'd have to top deck a land. So I'm actually not going to play the second land drop here. I guess the only problem is that leaves us dead to... Well, I mean, it would leave us dead to, like, Fulminator Mage, I guess. I was thinking Vindicate, but obviously they're probably not playing that. Do we want to play around them having Fulminator Mage? I guess we should. Cleansing Wildfire does not do it. Assassin's Trophy does not do it. Ugh. I hate that we have to play around Fulminator Mage, but it's one of the easiest ways for us to lose this game, so I think we do have to play around it. Little zero one Goyf. Remember when I said Bajuka Bog is good and I would like to play it in the main deck? Boom. Oh, to be honest, Grazer kind of stole the show there by playing the Titan on turn three. All right, so... Yeah, I don't know that I want to change much. Dismember is still looking not that great here. They could also have Douthy Voidwalker, though, so I think we probably want Dismembers. If not specifically for that card, because that card is bonkers against us. Yeah, I think we just run it back. They get to be on the play this time, which is going to be rough for us. <sighs> Man, our deck just wants to throw all of the no turn one amulet hands at us and see if we want to keep them. Again, this is... We don't even have any untapped sources, so I'm easily mulliganing this. And now we have... Excuse me. Explosives to interact, which is interesting. We probably won't have explosives for very long, considering our opponent is going to Thought Seize or Inquisition us, most likely. We also have to put one of these on the bottom if we keep it. 
Mulliganing for amulet doesn't make sense against them them being on the play though, as they'll just take our amulet. So we'd have to like mulligan into something crazy, like double amulet, summoner's pack titan, or double amulet, double titan, bounce land, land. We wouldn't even be able to keep all those cards, to be honest. So yeah, I think we just have to keep this. And I think we're probably bottoming the Val cut. We want to keep our interaction. We want to keep our Titan. I mean, we could we could bottom the Titan and either transmute for a Titan or hope to naturally top deck a threat. I don't know. We're more likely to draw lands, though, I think, considering our deck is like half lands. So probably better to bottom the land, even if it is a natural Val cut, you know, because like our drive is just not going to survive. It might not ever hit the table depending on if our opponent has a discard spell or not. They lead on Bobble, targeting themselves, and they choose to fetch because they don't want to draw the card that they saw, or they would prefer to play a turn one card instead. Oh, they have Street Wraith as well, so they did not want to draw that card. They Bobble us. Okay, and here comes a discard spell, now that they have perfect information. Exactly, Inquisition. Probably taking Explosives, I would think, unless they have no answer for Dryad. So if they take explosives, we should assume that they have a way to kill Dryad or another discard spell to take Dryad. Interesting. They take the Dryad. Okay, so that indicates to me that if they have enough, another discard spell, they're going to just take Titan. Golos. That's interesting. Hmm. If we play explosives on one here, we get underneath our opponent having a second Inquisition, however, and I think that is probably worth too much to to pass up. Even though I'm on the read that they have either exactly one more discard spell and they want to take Titan, or they don't have another discard spell. Regardless, I'm still going to play the explosives on one here just to get it out underneath uh, Inquisition if they top decked it or something. So, we'll pass. Maybe they expect us not to play the explosives out as well, and they were planning on using Inquisition that way. I doubt it, though, because they just they can guaranteedly hit the Dryad that was in our hand if they take Explosives first. So I, my read is that they either have exactly Thought Seize or they have no more discard spells. Our opponent has put themselves to 10. I would not be surprised if their turn this turn was play Death Shadow as a 3 3, Thought Seize You. Or in the opposite order, Thought Seize You, Death Shadow. Or they just pass. That's, that's cool too, I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll play the T West out here. I guess if we played a Bounce Land, we could pick up the Breeding Pool and have a turn 3 Dryad if we top decked it. That might have been better. They didn't do anything either. There's a Thought Seize. Interesting. So either they did have it and didn't play it last turn, or they just top-decked it. So <laughs> Golos looking like a nice little intermediary threat here. Loving it, loving it. They probably have to take Titan regardless, I would think. Unless they're just going to double Thought Seize us this turn. They take the Golos. Okay. Second Thought Seize? No? Just trying to kill us before we get our mana online, I guess. They're at six. No threat. What is going on? Okay. Amulet. Yeah, I mean, we are definitely playing that. And we'll play, I guess, Sanctuary, as it's the most useful one to have in play color-wise. Color the white is unique. The red is not particularly, since we can always search for a Val cut. And, in fact, we might want to do that anyways. We'll pass. I guess they might have a shadow, but they don't want to commit it into a known explosives. Thought seize. Okay. <laughs> They're at four. They're at four, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't mean that we can do anything about it. Dryad. Interesting. I think we are probably supposed to play that. We play Gruel Turf, leave one floating, pick up the Gruel Turf, play Gruel Turf a second time, transmute this turn, and then have Titan next turn. Wait, wait, wait. We need to tap our mana correctly. Yeah, I think that's the best line here. 
It also incentivizes us to play out our land drop first so that we get to play two lands this turn regardless. So this also plays around them having a removal spell for Dryad as we get to do what we want to do regardless. So It doesn't play around Croxa or Colgan's Command or Discard Spell to transmute now, but I don't think we really have a choice. So we can float this for a blue using the Dryad ability, and we'll pick up Bounce Land again. And we'll transmute, set up the Summoner's Pact, and force our opponent to have something pass. We have Titan next turn with Dryad in play. I mean, the Dryad is a pretty good threat by itself. It's already half their life total as, as of right now, so... They didn't do anything on our instep either, so not looking great for them. Hopefully they have another discard spell. We could have left the Gruel Turf in play and picked up the Breeding Pool so that we could pack in response if they did have discard spell, but whatever. All right, so there's no sense in playing out the Saga first here as it makes a trigger anyways, so we'd rather just float the white mana so we can get Valakut and Slayers. That way we are opposing lethal in several different ways. Right, now we'll pick up the Breeding Pool, I think, just, again, to not be dead to Summoner's Pact if they have double removal spell or something crazy. We get the Primeval Titan. Leave the white floating. We get Slayers and Valakut. There's the Valakut. There's the Slayers. Now if they trophy the Titan, they're still taking two and potentially dead to Dryad next turn, so. And if they have Dismember, and they were planning on killing the Dryad if we were going to try to lethal them with just Valakut, now they have to also have an answer for the Titan. They could Dismember the Dryad taking two and then trophy the Titan and still be in the game. They also have Unholy Heat. That works. All right, I guess we could have hasted the Dryad there and forced them to heat the Dryad. That would have been an interesting play. <gasps> no, I meant to swing for two. Oh, well. That's really annoying. Well, we still have Urza Saga for additional threats here, so we're not doing too, too bad. We'll go ahead and pay. Yep. And we'll draw. Interesting. Well, we probably have to blow up the one drops this turn. We can't let them untap with Shadow. I guess we could play Land Land Grazer, block the Shadow, and then pop explosives on instep so they can't just have a second Shadow as a blocker. I think that's a good play. We'll start by playing Breeding Pool Tapped. Not worried about putting a trigger on the stack here and getting denied our second land drop, as they would have killed Dryad by now if they had it. We'll send a Valka trigger upstairs. Always yes, always yield. Our opponent would be dead this turn if we had attacked for two last turn. Ugh, that is so frustrating. Okay, that's all right. We'll, we'll make do. We're playing to the best of our ability. We'll play this Grazer. And we'll pass. Nope. We can chump the Death Shadow. And if they do have, like, Team or Battle Rage or something, then we can just pop the explosives. But otherwise, we pop explosives on instep. And next turn, even if they have exactly one blocker, we can attack with both creatures, and whichever one they don't block, we stronghold in order to get lethal damage through. So I guess that doesn't work if we block with the Grazer, though. Are we supposed to just take 12 here and go to 5? I don't think that's crazy. That gives us two lethal attackers. Actually, no, we can we can make a construct with the Saga and then stronghold the construct and be able to attack with it that turn. So blocking with the Grazer here is free, assuming they don't have a way to kill the Saga. And, I mean, yeah, they still need a way to answer Dryad and a way to kill Saga. So, right, well, we'll pop Explosives here. No Team or Battle Rage for you, opponent. We, we didn't forget that we have Explosives in play.
yeah, and now we just make a token with a saga, haste the token, attack with both, and they're probably just straight up dead. Channeler, you got it? Well, that explosives on one that we played out very early it seems to have done a lot of work. We'll saga to make a dude, leaving the red and white floating. And we'll haste the dude. And go to combat. And attack. We drew the land for a lethal Valka trigger, I now realize, but... I mean, obviously we didn't need it, so... Whew! Close nail-biter match there. Way closer than it should have been, considering we missed that swing for two, but regardless, we managed to pull through with some tight play. So, anyways, we're currently 3-0 and with Karn, and we have won at least one match off the back of Karn, I would say. Maybe we'll play against Annual in the future and be able to Karn liquid metal coating their lands away and win easily that way. I don't know, we'll see. But anyways, currently a 3-0. Thank you guys for suggesting that I play this list, and I'll see you guys in the next match. This is Redface Menace, signing off.